John Ferentino. Mr. John Ferentino. The big enchilada. John, John Ferentino. John Ferentino. John Ferentino. We gotta get him on right now. He's gonna rush, folks. Mr. John Ferentino. Come on. How you guys doing? Good. Oh, great. I do comedy, do magic, and you'll find fun that I'll do the magic part. I'm going to start off tonight by showing you how to do a magic trick, and then I'm going to teach you how to do it. Start off with take a little red handkerchief and shake this around a couple of times. If you want to do this too many times, I think the reason is pretty apparent. <laughs> handkerchief goes in your hand, goes in there once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, a whole bunch of times. That's my hand inside like this. Move your hand over the top, this becomes an egg. The silk handkerchief appears here in your pocket. It's a very cool trick till I teach you how it works and you'll go, hey, that's crap. It's a fake egg and there are two handkerchiefs. You <laughs> shut up, it fooled you the first time. All right, here's how you do this. You go to the store, you buy two handkerchiefs. Make sure they are the same color. The duplicate one, that's the other one, goes into your pocket. Then you go to a craft store, you buy a plastic egg, you cut a hole there about the size of a quarter, you tuck the other handkerchief and you push it inside. Do not do this part in front of the person you're going to show the trick to. <laughs> that's the entire trick, it looks like a little egg with a tail. That goes in your hand, that goes into your fingers, then your hand goes in your pocket. Then you wander around saying who wants to see a magic trick. Because generally people that don't know you don't come up to you and go, excuse me, do you do anything with an egg? <laughs> you transfer the egg, you pull out the handkerchief, and you shake the handkerchief. Shaking the handkerchief does one of two things. One that looks kind of magic-y. <laughs> but the real reason why we do it is to keep everybody's eyes off the deformed hand. <laughs> now you take the handkerchief, and it looks like you're placing it into your hand. You push it in there once, twice, three times, four times, five times, a whole bunch of times. Push it deep down inside like that, but you know it's not really going into the hand. Where is it going? Into the, into the egg. Make sure the hole is facing off. <laughs> Go back into the pocket, take out the other handkerchief, then you show the egg. Always keep your hand over the red spot. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a trick. Occasionally, some of the audience will notice the red spot. They'll always yell out, hey, what's at the red spot? So yell it, I'll show you what to do. It's nothing. <laughs> That's what I do. It may not work for you. <laughs> to do that point, you got to take the red spot. You have to peel it off the egg like that. And you have to reach out and you got to take out a glass. And you take the egg. Scene from every horror movie you've ever seen. <laughs> now, or even this thing in my head is really stupid. Think about the possibilities of owning this. <laughs> Stick in your head, get in your car, get on the interstate. <laughs> Drive as fast as you can. <laughs> and the cop pulls you over, roll down the window and go, God, have I had a lousy day? <laughs> Got nothing to do, two o'clock in the morning, stick in your head, go hang out in a hospital emergency room. <laughs> Just watch everybody else walk in. If it looks at you weird, be coming to New York or walk up to that nurse and go, hey, 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 how long am I supposed to wait here? But that guy's with fractured ankles are going, oh no. <laughs> Summertime Long Island, where I'm from, got nothing to do, I do get in my car, drive till I find the most crowded beach I can. Swim out as far as I can, stick this in my head and just get washed up on the beach. <laughs> the people in New York are really kind too, they come running up and poke you with sticks. Hey Tony, look, this just came in from Jersey. <laughs> A lot of entertainers come out with a lot of flash 
flair and color, and that's the act you wanted, here it is. Thank you. Watch. Whoa. Hey, don't be real impressed. It's something you couldn't do for $29.95. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, that you laughed at. The only thing with this spell, I can guarantee you wouldn't be laughing. this level of a crowd. I think we're bonding now. You need an adult male. What's come up? An adult male. Come on, what's come up? Who wants to be brave? Yeah, the guy with the flower shirt. Come on up here. Give him a round of applause. What is your name? Roger. Roger just saying on the formal line, apparently. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat there, Kahuna. All right, what I want you to do is take this piece of rope and examine it, Roger. Make sure it's a piece of rope with two ends and a center. The purpose of the two ends are to keep track of the center. We're going to take a pair of scissors, cut off the two ends, and then have a piece of rope with no ends. <laughs> I do that part. You just do the cut. You do my sister. <laughs> Perfect. All right. All I want you to take a pair of scissors, cut the rope right in the center, and we shall continue to round the definition of law. Let's give it a cut. What are you doing? <laughs> never happened before. <laughs> Luckily for me, I have 70 more pairs. And the crowd goes, Ooh. Luckily, I got 70 more pairs. Ooh. How spontaneous. <laughs> well, I want you to take the first scissors, cut the rope right in the center, and we'll continue to rock. You're going to be cutting. Hmm. <laughs> put your fingers in the little holes and go, oh. <laughs> No, Rob, I'm going to cut the rope because I don't have much more time left in my life. Give me, of course, two equal pieces of rope, more or less. If this happens, no problem. We do is stretch the ropes. What I want you to do is just wave your hand over the top, Roger. magic wand and tap my hand right across the top. <laughs> I'm not saying a word, dude. Say the magic words, Abra Viagra. <laughs> and you can see now when it's twinkling the eye, the rope is totally back to one piece. You'll get over it. <laughs> the reason why it's not working is because Roger doesn't look like a magician. That's why he gets to wear the magic hat. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you look good, man. You're like a Harry Potter surfing instructor. Got <laughs> <laughs> a magic wand in here. Take the magic wand. <laughs> Put it around and say the magic words. No, no, this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> you put a spell on the crowd? Pretty good. I 
was waiting for something to happen myself. All right, just wait to happen. I take this up.
Don't tell me you don't care. I want to know. <laughs> what do you want? Can I make a cat? Same as a dog. <laughs> In the balloon world, any other animal? Give me something hard. Kangaroo. A what? Perfect alligator. All right, Sarah. <laughs>
to sit on the court face up. Because in his envelope, <laughs> you couldn't sit face up. You sit with the court face up. <laughs> we in the devil's triangle? All right. Here we go. Because in his envelope, that's clearly marked danger, spooky stuff inside. I have some predictions I knew about her before I've met her. So here's how we play the game. When I hold up the envelope as a group, we scream out as loud as we possibly can. Danger. Danger. I turn this over, we go, spooky stuff inside. I stand out like this, and we go, ooh. We're do it once, it's a little dress rehearsal. Give me any attitude problem, we're here till 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Don't be the person that keeps the whole group here. Here we go, in this envelope, that's clearly marked. Danger. Her mind. Let's review. She's had free selection of any card. She's sitting on one card face up. It is my job to determine what that card could possibly be. All right. <laughs> I put your head all the way back like this. So you out for the one. Still sitting on the card, right?
was you had said Eddie Murphy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Actually, there is only one picture in the envelope. Look, who is that a picture of? Uh, Kevin Costner. Uh, uh, that's a nice yeah. big round of applause. <laughs> Come up, guys, going through the airport. The guys going through my luggage. The guy goes, can't come on the flight with anything labeled danger unless you declare it. I go, okay, I declare spooky stuff inside. <laughs> Two guys behind me just got off a ship on the TSA line. <laughs> <laughs> like two hours of my life, I'll never get back. All right, you want to see something neat? Why don't you come up over there? All right, 
No, no, you came up pretty sparkly. Just give it back. You come up. You come up. You go up. All right, that's it. Just you guys. All right, three of you. Perfect. Come on up here. We need four. There we go. And over here. Okay, that's it. No more. All right, here we go. Four of a line. Slide the order. Go, Skyler. Go, Skyler. There we go. All right, what's your name? And where are you from, Jada? How old are you? Ten. Ten. Are you related to her? Sisters? All right, and that's why you know that you're not know, sitting next to each other. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to do a little magic trick for you. All right? What we're going to do is everyone's got a job. You are going to be the lovely ooh-ah girl. So you hold this like this and like this. And when I tell you to step forward, you're going to go like this. The audience is going to go, ooh. go like this.
sleep the magic happens with this handkerchief. We're going to get rid of this completely. Okay? Gather around. Make a circle. All right. Okay. Get in your clothes. Get over here so they can see. Get over there. All right. Here we go. Push it in here like this. Watch. Closer. <laughs> You're getting close to me. <laughs> I'm going to leave you out. All right. Where's the red handkerchief? Okay. Get your fingers out of there. Watch it. Push it like this. Watch it. Not in this hand, right? You know it's got to be there. Tap with the magic wand. Is it an underhand tap? Watch. <laughs> you were so freaked out. Are you working for the IRS? I'm going to show you where, when you see these lines in my hand, mine open up. Yeah, they do. Open it. Okay, watch. I'll show you. You see the in there? You see it? I knew you would. All right, watch. <laughs> Tap over there. Tap over there. Oh, well. It's me. Tap over there. Watch. You're going to be so freaked out when you see this.
About a year ago, I was lucky enough to get the last flight out of New York to St. Martin before this bl big blizzard hit. And four hours later, I'm sitting on a dock in St. Martin in paradise, thinking about the snow I left behind me. This little boy about nine years old comes up to me and goes, where are you from? And I go, I'm from New York. He goes, oh, I really wish I was from New York. I asked him why. He told me that he had never seen snow before. And I started thinking, when you were a kid, snow was the most magical thing in the entire world. It wasn't the fact that it came down from the sky, the fact that it was the beauty of nature. It was one, only one thing that mattered to you. You woke up the next morning and your parents told you that school was closed. <laughs> and to a kid, that's magic. But as you get older, you forget what it's like to be a kid, and that feeling of young is being gone. Every time it snows, you can think of a thousand reasons why you can't enjoy it. How you have to shovel your driveway, clean your windshield, leave for work early, and the list goes on and on. Feeling of young gone. Kid said to me, what's in this case? I told him it was magic equipment. He goes, oh, did you make it snow for me? Well, it was a piece of napkin, so I took it, I ripped it up like this. And this would look like something. I ripped it up. I told him you could picture billions and trillions of these coming down for hours at a time. It would sort of look like that. He was about as impressed with that as you just were. <laughs> so I had one more piece of napkin. I ripped it up. I told him that he'd have to feel it colder than he's ever felt in his life. I told him besides cold, there's water. But it doesn't quite get cold enough to get a little rain. Cold. And there's wind. But if you put all the elements together again, you'd feel like a kid would look like this. Oh, yeah.